All right, it's a story we've been following since it dropped. He's suing the NFL, alleging racism. You know who I'm talking about. And tonight, we got him. NFL coach Brian Flores is telling his side of the story in his own words to BNC's very own Kelly Wright. Now, Kelly's here. He joins us with a one-on-one -on -one interview. We're also joined by uh, Anthony Amy, double A as I like to call him. We got the latest developments coming out of this lawsuit. Kelly, what a great get. Congratulations. Uh, tell us more about this interview. Thank you. Well, it's a bombshell of an interview in terms of the power that Brian Flores speaks with and his passion and commitment to it. I want to play an excerpt for you right now of him talking about the personal costs that this uh, case has caused him to have with his family and, of course, with friends and, and people who have been close by his side. Take a listen to this. Brian, what you're personally going through, how does this impact you and your family knowing that you have placed your career on the line in order to stand up for African-American coaches who are talented enough, capable enough, and as you stated, gifted enough to serve in the NFL as a head coach of any of the organizations that are seeking to employ head coaches? Well, I would say it's not just um, limited to head coaches and executives in the National Football League. This is across all industries. Um, you know, as far as my family, you know, I've got an extremely supportive wife and three beautiful children. Um, and this has been hard on, on us. It, it really has. Um, from, you know, getting fired to filing a lawsuit to, um, you know, not getting one of the, the open uh, head coaching positions. Um, this, is, this, has been, uh, this has been hard. Um, you know, we, 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 we were excited to go to Pittsburgh. Um, and have that, that opportunity. Um, but I've had a lot of conversations with my nine and eight year old about race these last two or three weeks um, and trying to get them to understand um, that some things are, are, are unfair in this country for black and brown people. Um, and that's something that's hard for, for, for young kids to wrap their heads around. Um, but, but I know that we're, 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 we filed a lawsuit and we're fighting this fight for them. Um, you know, for, for uh, you know, kids who are, you know, nine and eight, and, you know, I don't want them to be limited to, to thinking they can, they just have to be players, uh, that they can be coaches, that they can, they can be executives, that they can be CEOs. Um, that's why we filed the lawsuit. That's why we're, uh, that's, that's, that's important to me. And, um, uh, again, you know, yeah, there was a lot of risk here. Um, I, I understood that, but, um, and at the end of the day, I, I, I was going to probably have more regrets and, uh, than anything. And I would probably wouldn't, I told my wife this, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if we didn't go through with this and um, allowed this to happen to, uh, you know, hopefully generation after generation. I just, I just, I wouldn't be able to live myself. And to Shawnee, that right there is the heart, mind, and soul of Brian Flores, his family. Not only his family, but black families throughout this country, little boys and girls who are people of color and making them understand that racism is real and having that heart-to-heart -heart talk, which had to be so difficult and continues to be difficult. He stated that it's very hard for him, but he's moving forward because he wants to prepare a better world for his children and his children's children. And any black man who's actually worth his salt and has risen to the height that he has, where he has a success story to tell, yet still goes through racism and brings it to bear, is a man who's passionate about not only life, but also about doing the right thing. Absolutely. We heard uh, Brian Flores mention Pittsburgh, and one reason that now Pittsburgh Steelers senior assistant Brian Flores says he is able to speak out to people such as our Kelly Wright is his refusal to sign a non-disclosure agreement with his former team. Uh, this just coming out last night, Flores says that when he learned the Miami Dolphins would be parting ways with him January 10th, that was followed by an invitation to sign a separation agreement, which includes a clause that is highlighted as non-disparagement. It was for a two-year period, and although the team called Flores' allegation categorically false, more on that in a moment, his attorneys provided copies of the document that he chose not to sign. That agreement asked that Flores, quote, not make any disparaging or untruthful remarks regarding MDL, that's the Miami Dolphins, or any of the releases which are or could reasonably be interpreted to be of a negative or critical nature, end quote. It also required Flores to agree not to participate in any manner as a witness or consultant in any lawsuit 
or complaint unless requested to do so by the team. Now, as a result, a payment termination notice dated January 27th, signed by the team's Senior Vice President of Football and Business Administration, Brandon Shore, stated, based on your failure to execute the club separation and release agreement, you are not entitled to receive continuing payments under the agreement. Flores fired with two years left on his contract, so in other words, if you talk, you don't get paid. The Dolphins released the following statement. This latest assertion by Brian Flores that Dolphins owner Steve Ross mentioned an NDA to him is categorically false. This just did not happen, and we simply cannot understand why Brian continues this pattern of making unfounded statements that he knows are untrue. The Dolphins added, we are fully cooperating with the NFL investigation and look forward to all of the facts coming out, which we are confident will prove that his claims are false and defamatory, end quote. Uh, Kelly Flores' legal team provided the screenshots. In other words, as Flores said all along, he has receipts, and according to Flores and his attorneys, he chose not to sign so that he could move forward with litigation, uh, as you mentioned a moment ago, refusing the money in hopes of helping current and future coaches. But uh, I have to ask, did you sense any second thoughts at all on his part? Because uh, as you said moments ago, the man is sacrificing his career potentially as a head coach in the future. I, I sense no uh, pause in what he's doing uh, except more determination to get it done and call the NFL and team owners into an account of living up to their credo, and that is to inspire change, which is their new social justice platform, as you know. Inspire change, stop racism, Black Lives Matter. And to your point, uh, Anthony, Doug Wigdor, who is one of the lead attorneys in representing Brian Flores, stated to me on camera, uh, he says, hey, we're, we're not going to pay you out for the last two years talking about what the Miami Dolphins did. But then he goes on to say this. He didn't sign it, so he's not going to get that money. That's money that he left, millions of dollars. And at least for now, knowing that it wasn't about the money, this is something very key, and knowing that it was a greater cause and change that he could create by not signing that NDA, and that is why we are calling on the commissioner, Roger Goodell, the NFL, to release people from their NDAs so they can talk. There are a lot of coaches out there and players who perhaps would like to talk and comment, those who are presently serving in the NFL, and they're unable to talk because of these NDAs holding them bound uh, and kind of like a gag on them. Uh, Kelly, um, I also want to ask you um, about the proof uh, that Brian Flores says he has of his assertion that Stephen Ross offered him $100,000 per loss in 2019. Now, considering the proof he appears to have here, is there much doubt that he may have more to support that claim, more receipts? Yeah, his attorneys are talking about that they have the proof, they have the evidence, and they welcome the opportunity should it go that far uh, up the legal chain and that they will present that when, uh, when it's time to be called upon to do that. Uh, so that is something that is uh, many people are watching and waiting to see if there's a smoking gun, what kind of uh, evidence they have. But I, I do know his attorney is very thorough and, he, and his other attorney is also very thorough, and they're doing their best to uh, make sure that this case proceeds uh, so that the NFL really addresses the issue. And we've heard from the NFL commissioner when this first broke, the NFL commissioner admitting just uh, a day before the Super Bowl that there is a problem. There is a racial problem within the NFL and that something has to be done about it. But some of the former players who actually boycotted the Super Bowl and some former coaches, one of those players, Daniel Buggs, who will be on tonight, said, look, you know, Roger Goodell has to stop talking the talk and start walking the walk, basically saying for the past 15 years he's had an opportunity to do something about the problem but has failed to do so. All right. Kelly, double A. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us today. Appreciate it. Great conversation.